All right, so today we're gonna to tune this thing, the Shen Drones Thick. Okay, so this is the Shen Drones Thick. It is a payload drone to ha carry a cinematic camera for like movie production and that kind of stuff. I think the cameras are generally about 1.3 kilograms. We have about a five pound weight. I'll put up in the screen what the difference is. So this weight is more than it will need to carry, uh, but the gentleman that I'm tuning this for wants a five pound tune out of this thing and then we'll go back to the 1.3 kilograms or whatever it is. You can see it's an octocopter, so we have one motor spinning on the top uh, in, motors on the bottom spinning on the out. That of course gives it additional lift and also some redundancy in motor control. Uh, so if a motor will drop out, I believe it can catch up. Um, not sure, and I'm not gonna test it. All up weight with the battery and everything, I think is about nine pounds. So we're talking, you know, pretty heavy. And if this is something you're interested in, you can uh, contact Troy at Quad Standard Labs, and I'm sure he'd be happy to build one for you. He works with Shen Drones. Shen's, this is their design for the frame, but uh, Quad Standard Labs builds drones like this. Okay, so I did some preliminary flights on this just to make sure it flies line of sight. Made some tweaks to the PIDs. I'll throw those up in the upper right of the screen here. What I did just recently is I moved the master slider up to a 2.0, and I wanna see how that looks, and then we'll, we'll go from there. The ESCs on this are the APD ESCs, and obviously there's eight of them. So those are a new type of ESC. They, it's interesting, they have auto timing and auto PWM. So check those out, they're quite expensive. I think they're $50 a pop, or if you go with the 120 amp version, they're $100 a pop. So they're pretty expensive. You can see there's a capacitor on each, and then there's also a capacitor in the back here. Um, I don't know what that is, 35 volt. I don't, I don't know what, I think it's, this is 1,000 microfarad. So these are 350 or these are 330. Arm it up, see what we got. Engines armed. Engines disarmed. Right, I don't know if you could hear that, but I could hear an oscillation. So obviously the um, pits are too high for the D term and you could saw what those were up in there for right. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna unplug this here, plug in the app and bring those down. Now with logging, you have the added benefit of being able to see which axis primarily the oscillations are coming from. So you can see here it's primarily from the pitch, although there was some on the roll here as well. And you can see it's we're kind of right on the cusp or on the edge of the roll axis. Now you do get some feed over. So this oscillation from the pitch could be what is causing the roll, but it's definitely primarily from the pitch. Again, benefit of logging without that, you really wouldn't be able to see where that oscillation is coming from. Now, if you're doing a really custom tune where you're kind of departing from the sliders, this would be an indication that you'd need to bring the PD balance, that means the P and the D gain, bringing them down together, holding the ratio between the two that you already have, and bring them down together. That would primarily have to happen on the pitch axis, and that I would anticipate would make this go away on the roll axis. So in my synopsis where I was thinking the oscillation was actually coming from the roll axis, it was actually coming from the pitch in this scenario. And you can see what I did is I took the master slider all the way up. There's a lot, a lot of weight on the pitch axis here. So these higher eye terms I felt were probably appropriate. And I wanted to mess with that a little bit. You can see in the logs, and I'll flash it up in the upper right, how the pitch axis, the eye term is really offset down below for the weight up front. So digging into that a little further, when you see this and you have an eye term that's in forward steady flight or whatnot, or when you're you know, really jamming the throttle or, or whatever scenario you're doing, and it's really departing from the zero axis here and holding out a lot, that means there's a lot of imbalance in the quad. And you wanna increase your eye gains so this term doesn't have to push. You don't actually need to increase the eye gains because eye is kind of self-correcting because it's a cumulative term. However, the lower the eye gain, the farther this will be down. And then when that needs to reverse and the, the, the weight shifts, it has to unwind itself all the way back to zero. So weight, and that can cause throbbles to occur and all kinds of weird bobble action because it has to, again, unwind itself all the way back to flip over signs and push the other direction. So to get this to be map a little bit closer to zero, what you can do is increase the eye gain and then that won't wind up so far away from the zero access threshold here. 
My guess is the oscillation is happening on the roll axis, not the pitch. So we could probably leave pitch up here and bring down roll. But I'll have to look at the logs on that and we'll come back and refine this a little bit. For now, I'm just going to go ahead and bring this down a little bit uh, all together. So I'm going to bring this down into the 40s for the D term. Uh, again, I bet you I could left the pitch up, but we don't have that ability on the sliders as of right now to uh, differentiate between pitch and roll. So, so we'll revisit that differential between the roll and the pitch after we get the basic tune done and then we'll come back. You can see I just have the filter sliders 1.0 uh, RPM filter set up on this, even with the APDs. And then there's a, a low pass on the yaw, so we'll leave that on there as well. Engines armed. Alright, so now it's... There's a little bit of kick. I want to do uh, no kick there. It looks good on the a little bit of a kick on the roll. Right, this is telling me it's 20.7 volts on the battery. Let's take it easy. Do some smooth forward flight. It's got all kinds of jello. Definitely want to try to look at that. It's going to be a tough one. All right, I got to land. Engines disarmed. So it's always good to land drifting back on these a little bit because the uh, it's a little front heavy with that weight out front. All right, so you saw the flights with the five pound weight on it and it's kind of docile, but it looks pretty critically damp to me. There's just a little bit of vibration again. I kind of think that's because this is hanging out here like this. And I think it just amplifies any, any vibes. I would guess that's not gonna show up on this top since it's kind of soft mounted here. There's a little bit of a flex here to suck up any vibes. And I've taken the, the five pound weight off. Now we have this rock, which emulates this is about 1.43 kilograms, and uh, supposedly the camera, I guess, goes up here is 1.5, so we're just trying to have an analog for that. And you can see with this, too, um, it's not like I have perfect props. You know, these props are not in ideal, perfect condition here. Uh, you can see a couple are, are broken. A lot of times when I do a tune, I will leave that kind of stuff like that, just because, you know, I don't necessarily need it to be perfect props for tuning. I want it to be, yeah, I mean, these are decent. I think somebody would still fly with these and it flies okay just for that little bit of vibe thing. D terms are in the 30s on this right now. So that's kind of as low as they can go. Uh, and the vibes are kind of what they are. The filter, there's plenty of filtering on it. And uh, you know, you can always filter the vibrations out of a gyro signal, but you can't necessarily filter them out mechanically of, you know, that, that vibrations that are on the frame are still getting to this camera up here so okay so this flight will be with the 1.43 kilogram weight on it and uh, we'll see how it goes yeah vibe seemed much better I mean that weight was really heavy before so Feels a lot better to fly too, before it was. Or oh, it was so heavy to throw it around. Now it has some power. There we go, that's some nice. Yeah, here we go, and that's feels so, so much better here and more controllable with a reasonable weight on it. I mean, this rig can carry the five pounds, but man, you gotta be docile. Got some bugs on me here. And uh, uh, it just feels really overloaded. Yeah, 
You can still tell there's quite a bit of weight on this thing. You can see how much more aggressive I can fly. I feel like I can fly now that we... tell what the octocopter if you give it those hard hard rolls or hard yaws how it jumps so much more it's because those props you know there's more props that have to spin down so still got vibes but again my d terms are pretty low i don't see any bounce back on roll or pitch I have a little yaw jerk there, but that's not too bad. I don't really have too much prop wash. Alright. The other thing that's, uh, that's really nice is that the battery length was really short with that five pound weight on there. I mean, you could just tell it was really trying to... I still got those vibes. I don't know what to really do about that, so... Kind of is what it is with those. It's interesting because it's not so bad if I'm moving. Uh, it seems like it's just above that little bit of percent throttle. All right, 3.4 volts per cell. I got to bring this in. to walk that far. 3.3. Engines disarmed. All right. All right, so pretty good. Uh, definitely a lot more maneuverable with the lower weight on there. Um, 1.5 kilograms, I think it's 3.3 pounds instead of 5 pounds, but makes a heck of a difference. Uh, you can still see we have the shakes and the vibrations. I, you know, I hope that the camera mount on top would be able to address that. Okay, so looking at the log from the flight where there was 1.6 on the sliders right after I adjusted with the app, you can see here are the PIDs in forward steady flight. You can see this section of the log right here. Looking at the D-term, we really don't have an overactive D-term, nor are the motor commands overactive. So you can see that the vibration, I don't really feel like it's a pit induced vibration. It's just the mechanical vibration on the quad. And I think the HD camera mount being out front like that on the TPU, I don't think helps dampen that out any at least. So you, you see it mostly in the HD, but I don't think you'd be seeing that so much on the top camera rig. And that's obviously where the money's at. Either way, from a pit standpoint, I can't really make adjustments to that. The mechanical sound, you do have eight motors instead of four spinning. And I did notice that when I put some fresher props on it, they weren't so beat up, which obviously if you're putting a $35,000 camera on the front, I would recommend obviously clean props every time, even brand new props every time, because props are cheap and you're at such a level with the this kind of a drone that you would just put fresh props on. So what I did for the next step is I saw some things in the logs and went scrub through it. And I'm gonna do that scrub through and put that up for this week's Patreon only video. So if you're interested in that, sign up to Patreon and then you'll see that video coming out this week. But ultimately I decided I really needed to depart from the sliders. I do find myself sometimes getting into this crutch where I'm like, ah, I really don't wanna leave the sliders cause they're so convenient. But I see stuff in the log that the sliders are really meant for broad brush strokes on PID tuning for newbies, trying to make it easier, really trying to reinforce the PID tuning principles wonder who has that video series. 
Now, of course, Betaflight defaults are centered around a 5-inch 6S quadcopter. So when you're going up to this 8-inch octocopter, you know, with so much weight on it, it, you know, it's reasonable to just have to leave the sliders based on what you're seeing. One of the big things that is I see come up with a lot of large crafts is the yaw. You have to really increase yaw. Yaw authority is really bad on big crafts. Anything with, you know, over 6 inch, the yaw authority starts to go into the tank. So increasing my yaw gains, as you can see here, to 100, 120 on the I term. Of course, we never want D term on yaw because it just adds noise and the yaw is way too slow for D term. So it's, it's just silly to have D term on the yaw. And then just making some minor tweak to my PD balance. That's my P term divided by my D term and just adjusting those in a little bit. So this next flight is with these PIDs on it. The other thing that I think you'd be surprised about is I went ahead and turned off all my gyro filters like I talked about uh, in some recent videos. So we just have on the gyro signal the notches and the dynamic notch and then we just have the low passes on the D term. Now with this one I did go ahead and put on some fresh props for those three that were kind of chipped up a little bit because I wanted to see what the difference would be. So let's check that out and see how it looks. Oh, but look at the time. I'm sure you gotta go. So come back for part two and we'll take a look at the flights with those settings, talk about some other tweaks and tips. Until then, thanks everybody, and I hope this helped. And like smash that like button. Please. Cause then I if if you guys get me a billion likes, then I can make videos that are Fortnite. So do you want Fortnite videos or this video? What's better? <laughs>